canceling all flights to Caribbean destinations. Beginning on Sunday, Air Canada, WestJet, Sunwing, and Air Transat will suspend service to Mexico and the Caribbean until April the 30th. This is on top of requiring proof of a negative test result no more than 72 hours before boarding a flight. Any international flight entering the country will now only be allowed to land in four cities. That's Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and Calgary. And the federal government also announced some new rules for incoming international travelers, including rapid testing. Let's bring in CP24's Christina tonight. And Christina, we were just listening in there to uh, Dr. Teresa Tam and other federal ministers receiving quite a few questions about some of these new restrictions that have been announced. Yeah, so to start, there have been measures in place since last March. For example, the land border has been closed since last March. Since last March, the Prime Minister has asked Canadians to avoid all non-essential travel, and anyone returning from travel to this country is subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine, and you can't leave your home or your location of quarantine. Now we are learning that, and this is what was called by the Transport Minister a voluntary suspension of travel by the airlines uh, that they will not be flying those airlines you mentioned to the sunny destinations that include the Caribbean and Mexico when the question was asked at the federal update now why not have uh, these these measures in place to uh, to prohibit travel let's say from Florida to Canada or from from the US uh, what we learned from the federal update is one these airlines that are involved in today's announcement it was voluntary they're voluntarily assisting spending their travel to these countries. Uh, two, there are more measures that we anticipate to be announced from the Biden administration soon. Uh, and three, of course, also announcing today that not only do you need to have a negative test within 72 hours of departure before you come here to this country, but once you land, you also have to be tested again, stay in a hotel, and you have to pay for that hotel yourself uh, up to $2,000 for about three days while you wait for those test results. Once you determine if, if by the test that you are negative for COVID-19, you could quarantine at home. If you are positive, you have to continue to isolate at a federal facility. And on top of that, there will be increased surveillance. Uh, the Prime Minister saying a private security firm has been hired. Dr. Theresa Tam saying there'll be more door knocking and phone calls. Here's the Prime Minister. Those with negative test results will then be able to quarantine at home under significantly increased surveillance and enforcement. Those with positive tests will be immediately required to quarantine in designated government facilities to make sure they're not carrying variants of potential concern. In terms of the variant, yesterday we had learned as part of the province's modeling update that one, the variant is believed to be moving aggressively throughout the province, the UK variants that is. As of today, there are 51 confirmed cases of the UK variant. Modelers at yesterday's update say it is at least 30% more transmissible and it is lethal. Back to you. Christina Tanai on this story. Thanks, Christina. International travelers coming in on to, into Ontario will soon be required to submit a rapid COVID test. Four government sources confirming with CP24 the mandatory testing program is set to begin next week. It will be in place at Pearson Airport in the coming days and then expand to other international airports and land border crossings soon after. The push toward mandatory tests was for travelers was prompted by the rising number of variant cases being found in the province. Currently, travel doesn't account for a very significant proportion of our cases, but we have some of those variants discovered in Canada. They didn't magically appear here. They came here somehow. Uh, so if that means tightening up the border a bit more, I think it's a reasonable thing to do. Starting today, anyone who enters Manitoba must self-isolate for 14 days. Previously, only travelers arriving from areas east of Terrence Bay in northern Ontario had been subject to the rule. Premier Brian Pallister says this move to cover all out-of-province arrivals is needed because of the growing spread of novel coronavirus variants and delays in vaccines. And Ontario reporting 1,837 new cases of COVID-19 today, 58 more deaths, 32 are long-term care residents. There are 595 new cases in Toronto, 295 in Peel, 170 in York Region. More than 69,000 tests were processed. 
The Ontario Health Coalition is calling for stronger worker protections in the long-term care sector. The coalition teamed this morning with Unifor, which represents approximately 15,000 long-term care workers in nearly every classification, from PSWs to cleaning staff. They say the ongoing crisis in Ontario long-term care has led to troubling conditions and that urgent action is needed. We estimate more than 20,000 staff who are needed right now just to get care levels up to safe levels to deal with the problems that we're going to hear about today from families of loved ones not being bathed for weeks, not being fed, not getting proper hydration, no emotional support or very, very little, just woefully inadequate inhuman levels of inhumane levels of care. In, in December, I was horrified to hear about the situation in tender care. It was like deja vu. How could this be happening? Eight months later, have we learned nothing from wave one? How could it be that there wasn't enough oxygen or medication for residents? I, I was floored. The scale and severity of the current outbreaks across the province has demonstrated clearly the measures that are in place are inadequate. Ontario has fumbled and the seniors are paying with their lives. Hill Regents Medical Officer of Health is calling on the province to provide some more clarity about what is and isn't essential during this lockdown. We uh, recently did and concluded a study that we saw in Peel Public Health, uh, over 8,000 cases that we had uh, since August, uh, 2,000 of those individuals reported uh, having gone to work after they had developed symptoms. And a lot of this is really the consequence of, you know, uh, many of our essential workers have to choose between staying home and self-isolating or, you know, working when they're even mildly symptomatic, which is contributing to spread. Officers will visit more than 400 stores this weekend in Toronto, Hamilton and Kitchener-Waterloo to make sure they are complying with public health rules to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The province says officers have visited more than 1,100 big box stores and other essential retail businesses so far this month. 112 tickets have been issued to businesses and individuals during the inspection blitz. The most common reasons for non-compliance were failure to properly screen staff and patrons, improper social distancing, and workplaces not having adequate COVID-19 safety plans. European regulators approved the AstraZeneca vaccine today. The shot is approved for people 18 and over, though concerns had been raised this week that not enough data exists to prove it works in older people. Only 12% of participants in its research were over 55. They joined the trial late. The shot is the third one to get the green light in Europe. The EU bets heavily on AstraZeneca, which is cheaper and easier to handle than some other vaccines, and also pre-ordered 300 million doses to be delivered after approval. Newly released data shows that Johnson & Johnson vaccine is 66% effective in preventing moderate to severe symptoms. That's not as high as some of the other vaccines on the market. However, phase three tests involving 44,000 participants shows it is 85% effective against the most serious COVID-19 symptoms. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine only requires one shot compared to two from the likes of Pfizer and Moderna. In its first safety update, the European Medicines Agency says no new side effects have been identified as a result of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. An expert committee assessed reports of people who died after receiving the vaccine and said the review did not suggest a safety concern. The EMA noted that severe allergic reactions are known, but a rare side effect happening in about 11 cases per 1 million doses in the U.S. Extreme cold weather alert remains in effect for Toronto and city workers are patrolling streets to help people in need. The city's streets to homes teams are encouraging those who are living outside to come inside. There are four warming centers open throughout the city to help the homeless stay warm and stay safe. We go to visit those people all the time. We have a group called Streets to Homes, and they're not only the people who go out and check on people sleeping on the streets, and they make probably 50 contacts, uh, you know, every one of these cold nights, and we get a report every morning, and uh, probably 15 people that they will approach will accept uh, service, as we call it, that they will go and uh, go to a shelter bed. We have not had a case yet where the shelters were, you know, over full, in other words, where there wasn't a space for somebody who might come in off the street. to tell you, at least if you stepped out in the last 24, 36, 48 hours, 
you know we're into a pretty cold Arctic air mass uh, pattern that's going to stick for the next few days. However, uh, there is some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of warmer weather coming next week. So if you hate this cold, you don't have to wait all that long. Uh, but whether you hate it or you love it, you still have to prepare for it. Here's what you have to prepare for. The temperature this afternoon, minus 7. Feeling around minus 12 to minus 4, 14 uh, with the winds factored in. We'll see a little bit of sign. You can't rule out an ice lake. and determine what caused this fire. Let's bring in CP24, Steve Ryan. Uh, Steve, have you received any further update from officials at the scene there? Not uh, since the last briefing, which we had uh, at about 10:30 uh, uh, this morning, Courtney. But this is just a devastating scene here. Uh, the house behind me is completely ruined. Uh, fire went through a entire place. There were six residents in that place. Four have died as a result of the fire, and two managed to get out and are in hospital. One, I'm told, is in very serious condition. Because there is injury and death involved with this fire, it is the mandate of the, um, I forgot the name of the, the, the Ontario Fire Marshal's Office. I forgot the name of the Ontario Fire Marshal's Office. They're the ones that are going to do this investigation. They will determine the origin of this fire, how it was caused, and what they can do to prevent it from happening in the uh, future. I talked to uh, Chief Pig earlier, and I asked him as well, um, about fire alarms, smoke alarms, because it is very, very rare that four people will get trapped in a house and all four people die. Part of the investigation will involve looking into the smoke alarms. So here's more from Chief Peg. We have no, no indication yet as to the status on smoke alarms. They'll, the, all, all of the conditions, so the, the structural conditions, the code compliance, alarms, uh, human behavior, all of those aspects will be determined through the, the origin, cause, and circumstance investigation. That will happen, uh, our, as uh, Chief Jessup said, our fire investigations team is here now. The Ontario Office of the Fire Marshal is responding. Of course, both of those, both those teams will work in collaboration with Toronto Police to understand, and I think it'll be some time before we have that kind of information. So, as part of the investigation now, the Fire Marshal's Office will take the lead. The Toronto Police will do a parallel investigation just in case they determine that something was uh, done intentionally, criminal or suspicious. But as of right now, there's nothing to suggest that this was an intentional act, but it will be investigated by the Ontario Fire Marshal's Office. Let's set it back to you. Okay, Steve, thank you for that update. And firefighters are battling a house fire in uh, Oakville this afternoon. Chopper 20, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Chopper 24 was over the scene on North Park Boulevard. This was near Dundas and Six Line over the noon hour. Halton police say the occupants and neighbors made it out and no one was injured. It is not known what started this fire. There is a road closure in the area while crews fight the fire. 150 minus 9, this is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Traffic in your full way. You know, we talked a little bit about this last week, how we've uh, shifted from a very zonal flow where systems move very quickly, it keeps the Arctic air from moving too far south, to what we call an amplified jet stream where it looks more like a roller coaster. And as that roller coaster wave uh, kind of oscillates to the east, you get cold and then warm, cold and then warm, and you get a, an amp up of active weather as well. So that's the pattern we're in now. Uh, we're into the very cold, but it will get warmer next next week. In fact, so warm we may be talking rain by next Thursday evening. But let's deal with it here and now. It is chilly, and it's going to be bitterly cold again for the overnight tonight. So I don't expect that extreme cold weather alert will be lifted. Mainly cloudy skies today. A few peaks of sun. You might even see an isolated flurry or a few snow grains around. It shouldn't amount to much here. A lot more snow close to the south end of Lake Huron early today, which is also winding down as we push through the afternoon. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be bright and cold. The winds a little bit less than today, so it might be a bit more manageable. Sunday and Monday, the temperature continues to climb for afternoon highs and overnight lows, but it comes at a price. Yeah, I think it's an okay price to pay. A little bit more cloud cover and the risk of some flurries. Isolated nature on Sunday, better chance of seeing some light snow on Monday. Again, it won't amount to too much uh, at the most, maybe two to four centimeters. Another model has the system avoiding us altogether passing by to the south. Now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we get that nice push, you know, the, the pendulum swingeth, and uh, we get into the, the a bit of, of a ridge in the jet stream. That's going to allow some warm air to come in from the States. So minus one on Tuesday, zero on Wednesday, and then we're looking at uh, a temperature of one degree on Thursday. That'll feel downright balmy after this frigid stretch we've been in lately. I'll have more on the short range coming up.
Well, we did have some problems uh, for your Friday afternoon drive. They were happening on the westbound uh, 401 in the Express, uh, just as you made your way past the 410. Uh, it was a salt transport truck. It did have uh, the right lane block, but the problems there uh, did all come and go. Now, if you're on the 401 traveling eastbound, it is getting busier uh, for the afternoon drive on the approach to Kipling to Weston Road, headed towards uh, the Don Valley Parkway, also a little bit slower now from uh, just before Lawrence, right on through to the 401 and off the major routes in Scarborough. Crews on scene of a collision blocking lanes on Morningside and McClellan. I'll send it back to you, Courtney. The CP24 traffic report is brought to you by... Are ...facing new rules if they plan on coming into Canada as the federal government works to stop the spread of COVID-19. We'll have details on what was just announced when we come back with Jamie Bibbright. that Canada's major airlines have scrapped their routes to sunny destinations for the rest of the winter. Ontario is reporting 1,837 new cases of COVID-19 and 58 more deaths, 32 of which are long-term care residents. We are live at the scene of a fatal fire which claimed the lives of four people in the city's east end. It's 2 o'clock and minus 9 from 299 Queen Street West. This is Toronto's Breaking News. CP24, hello, I'm Jamie Goodfriend. We begin with breaking news. Canada's major airlines are canceling all flights to Caribbean destinations. Beginning on Sunday, Air Canada, WestJet, Sunwing and Air Transat will suspend service to Mexico and the Caribbean until April 30th. Ottawa will also require all international travelers to take a mandatory COVID-19 test upon arrival and quarantine at a government-approved hotel at their own expense as they await their test results. This is on top of requiring proof of a negative test result no, no more than 72 hours before boarding a flight. Starting next week, all international passenger flights must land only at the following four airports. Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. In addition to the pre-boarding test we already acquire, as soon as possible in the coming weeks, we will be introducing mandatory PCR testing at the airport for people returning to Canada. Travelers will then have to wait for up to three days at an approved hotel for their test results at their own expense which is expected to be more than $2,000. International flights will now only be allowed to fly into four Canadian cities, Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, and Vancouver. Well, Premier Doug Ford is also set to make a travel-related announcement. Government sources tell CP24 mandatory testing program is set to begin next week, something that has just been announced by the Trudeau government. It's unclear what other measures he will implement, but we will bring that announcement live at 3 o'clock. Ontario is reporting 1,837 new cases of COVID-19 and 58 more deaths, 32 of which are long-term care residents. There are 595 new cases in Toronto, 295 in Peel, and 170 in York Region. More than 69,000 tests were processed. The Ontario Health Coalition is calling for stronger worker protections in the long-term care sector. The coalition teamed, this, teamed up this morning with Unifor, which represents approximately 15,000 long-term care workers in nearly every classification, from PSWs to cleaning staff. They say the ongoing crisis in Ontario long-term care has led to troubling conditions and that urgent action is needed. The lessons of the first wave were not learned. Preparation was not made to staff up the homes. Uh, in order to have the resilience and the ability to provide care in the emergency uh, of the second wave. And as we have seen COVID-19 sweep through long-term care homes, we've seen staffing crumble and care levels crumble, not just in the homes with outbreaks, but in many homes across the province, even without long-term, without COVID-19 outbreaks. Her death, I believe, is a call to action, along with the deaths of all our precious seniors. We need immediate action and long-term substantive changes to long-term care. 
immediate action in adopting the recommendations of the COVID-19 Commission's interim reports would be a start. We need to address the systemic problems in long-term care. The conditions of work are the conditions of care. They're interconnected. There should be no profit in care. Peel Region's Medical Officer of Health is calling on the province to provide more clarity about what is and isn't essential during the lockdown.